Hello friends, it's so good to be together with you again today. We're looking at Psalms 36, 37, and 38, and these Psalms hold just some of my favorite verses in the Psalms, and uh, and we're going to jump into some of them in a minute here, but I want to talk about first in Psalm 36, uh, we're going to start kind of from verses 1 to 4, kind of focus on verse 1, but you're, you might be thinking to yourself as we look at these verses and talk about the fear of the Lord again, that you might be thinking, man, that sure comes up a lot in the Psalms, and you would be correct. And I think, church, we've got to understand there is something so, so important to see as David continually talks about the fear of the Lord. Why does he talk about that so much? We've got to understand, church, it is this reason. We know that many people who do not know the Lord have no reason to fear the Lord. That's why they're not walking with him. But what we've got to see, church, is that even for those of us who have proclaimed faith in Christ, fear of the Lord is not a given. It's not something that automatically comes to us just because we have faith in Christ. It is something that we continually need to put into practice in our lives and be seeking the help of the Holy Spirit in. And let me show you a little bit of an example. In in Psalm 36 verse 1, David says, this is is an oracle or a prophecy, a word from the Lord, concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. Friends, When we look at our own lives and see patterns of sinful behavior, do you know where that comes from? It comes from a lack of fear of the Lord. And I will explain it this way. What we need to get to a place to is see in James chapter 1, verse 14, it says that in verse 13, it says, no one should say when he's tempted that God's tempting me. And then in verse 14, it says, we are each dragged away by the desires of our hearts and enticed. And we need to face the hard truth, friends, That sin is tempting in its respective waves in our lives because it's enjoyable. Our flesh actually enjoys sin, and that is a hard truth to admit. But we've got to understand, if if something isn't pleasurable, if we have no desire for it, then it's not tempting. Only those things which our flesh craves is tempting. And so why would we turn then away from the pleasure of those things if we have no fear of the Lord? We won't. And thus... When we see patterns of sin, the problem is actually a fear of the Lord. We lack it in our lives. And so what we've got to see here, church, is this. How do we respond to that? We've got to recognize each of us will give account to the Lord. That's in Romans chapter 14. For example, I think Hebrews chapter 4 would talk about that. We've got to understand, church, that we must all give an account and seek the Lord. And so we could ask the Lord this question today. Lord, how do you see my level of the fear of the Lord. And then just spend some time letting him speak to you about that and ask if there are things you need to change so that those sin patterns that we struggle with, that he can fix those for us by changing our desires according to Romans 12, which says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Seek him in that today, church. Then in Psalm 37, these are encouraging verses for us in our society that we live in today where there's this wickedness that abounds. Amen? Look at this. David is just at peace about the whole thing. Is there a wickedness? Yep, he's not worried. Look at verse 1. Do not fret because of evil men. Verse 7. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways. What? You ever have these situations, you watch the news or hear about something going on, and you're like, why doesn't someone do something about this once? Yeah, sometimes the Lord calls us to get into action and those kinds of things. But church, we've got to actually adopt the attitude of David. He's like, yep. I'm not worried. Where does his confidence come from? Look at verse 9. For evil men will be cut off. Ha ha ha. He's actually like, he's so confident in the Lord. He's got, I wouldn't call it a devious uh, attitude about him, but he just recognizes there's no reason for me to be worried here because God is in control. And then if you look ahead into verses 35 and 36, he even says, I've seen wicked people flourishing in my life. But soon I look for him. And he could not be found. And he's just so at rest with the Lord. Church, can I encourage you to do something? If you are fretting because of the evil and wickedness that you see around us, conclude the way David does from verses 38 to 40, where he says, Sinners will be destroyed and the wicked will be cut off, and the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord, and he is their stronghold. And remember that in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, It just simply says that where where Jesus says that my eyes are on you. Don't worry about those who can only kill your body, but can't kill your soul. Rather, fear him 
who actually, after your body is dead, can also kill your soul. And just land it there, church. Just put your rest in the fact that God's got it and you can trust him. Then in closing, Psalm 38, I want to look specifically at verse 9. It says, All my longings lie open before you, O Lord. My sighing is not hidden from you. Friends, I think all of us are in the same boat when it comes to disappointments in life. There are all, all of us will have things that we just wrestle through and wonder, Lord, do you see the disappointment that these things cause in my heart? Friends, I've been there. Many of us have been there. And I just love so much that we serve a compassionate, kind, and gracious father. He sees, in Matthew 10, it says that he sees the sparrow when it falls. He knows the hairs on your head. And he sees the longings of your heart and the sighings when you're disappointed. Friends, can I encourage you today? Take heart. The Bible says that he who trusts in the Lord will never be put to shame. He who trusts, some versions will say he will never be disappointed. That's not talking necessarily that we won't face disappointing things in this life. But church, it's, a, it's an exhortation for us to once again set our eyes on eternity and look beyond the troubles of this life to the, the, the joy that lies ahead. Church, just rest in God's um, knowing of your disappointments and just ask him to walk with you through them. He is faithful and he loves you. 